All right, guys. Good morning. How are you? Actually, good afternoon. It's Saturday, January the 12th. It's about 2 p.m. Central Standard Time here in Manitoba, Canada. And we're going to take a look at the markets. So how are you guys have been doing, huh, after this downtrend? I think a lot of you guys are probably stuck in your long positions, I'm guessing, and you haven't cut your stop losses yet, right? That's stuff that I used to do a few years back as well. I'm sure that a lot of you guys are in short positions as well right now. Some of you guys are on the sidelines, I'm guessing, and just waiting for a long opportunity or a short opportunity. A lot of you guys are probably exercising caution, which is what I would be recommending in this market right now as well. So let's take a look at the market, but first of all, let's talk about the position that I decided to take. Sometimes the best position is no position, right? And always remember that, guys, that we gotta let the trades come to us rather than trying to force a trade because when you force a trade, um, sometimes you're just hoping for the best and hope is never a good strategy, right? And I firmly believe that the best position sometimes is absolutely no position. I have not taken a trade. I still maintain my 100% win streak and um, yeah, I'm waiting for the right opportunity. The last trade that I took was on a neo short position where I closed it in front of you guys. I'm still at about 6,800 Canadian dollars for the month. And um, I'm waiting for this opportunity, right? I didn't write it down as much as I wanted to, but I was busy with life and sometimes things like that come up. Uh, my exact profit is um, 5,140 American dollars this month so far, which is kind of a slow month because my margin balance is fairly low. I'm only playing up to $49,500 here, which is really not too much in my books because I usually like to scalp between uh, actually like uh, 80 to 150K, but there's not enough volume and um, I'm not really comfortable playing with that size right now. So I'm only going to allocate myself anywhere between 40 to 50K that I will play maximum, but realistically more like 20K is what I'm gonna play. We take a look at the 24-hour trending volume, and we see that Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, you know, every single coin right now is actually trending really low. Let's go to coin market cap right now and see where the market is trending. We're trending obviously well below $150 billion, which is what we were at um, just a few weeks ago, right? And now we're at about $122 billion. Not many coins are showing um, double digits, right? We got Bitcoin SV. That's actually up quite a bit. So we might wanna be taking a look at BSV right now. Um, what is that even at? Let's see if I can get BSV. BSV, it's only $1 million like a volume. I don't like to trade $1 million volume coins. It's just not worth my time right now. But that is the first double digit coin that's up here right now. And other than that, everything is trending between plus or minus zero to three or 4% right now. Um, nothing too interesting. So let's take a look at Bitcoin and the 24 hour volume here as well. So for the 24 hour volume, we see that, you know, we were trending 5 billion, 5 billion, 5 billion, 5 billion. And then that big drop is going to about $6.8 billion here, right? And then now we're leveling off and averaging about 5.5 billion. Now we're about $4.9 billion with about four hours to go for the daily close. So it's looking like just from everything that I'm seeing, because the volume is now slowly declining, it's not because the bulls are not coming into play to defend with higher volume. It's a slow accumulation period. The way that I'm actually looking at this right now is more so the bears don't have enough driving force to push down this price right now. Not only that, the series of candles that we're getting is indicating some sort of support right now in this specific region. And a lot of exchanges right now are actually hitting this support as well already. For example, BitMEX is pretty much getting a wick, a really big wick down to the golden ratio range. So right here, guys, if you take it there, right? We're pretty much just bouncing literally right off of the golden ratio right here. 3665, that's kind of what I've been predicting, right? So we're getting a pretty, pretty good range here between 3550 and 3650, where we are showing some solid signs of support thus far. If I go to the daily, for example, yesterday's daily ended up closing with a beautiful doji candle, right? Not the highest volume, but nevertheless a doji. Every time we've been getting a doji, just for example, right here, like we can take a look at any doji, for example. Okay, this one there, 
on the bottom of a fairly heavy downtrend, we bounced up. This doji right there at the bottom of a heavy downtrend, we bounced up. This one here is only the B correction or A correction coming down, so it was not really indicative that we were gonna bounce, right? In my opinion. Not only that, the crossover uh, um, the crossovers were happening on some higher time frames as well. So now we're getting a doji so far today as well, with about three and a half hours to go. And we are also um sorry those trap. Uh, we're also getting a doji for the two-day candle as well, right? So I think that if we end up closing with a doji candle two days in a row on the daily, or a, a doji on the two-day candle close, it's gonna be some pretty good indication that we have found some decent support, and I will absolutely expect an uptrend for at least a small pump of three to four percent, right? Let's take a look at the weekly candle as well now, and also the monthly for you longer term investors, okay? We take a look at the weekly candle, and what we are seeing very clearly is that we have dropped well below in the November periods, below the 200 moving average, the exponential moving average. We made some attempts to break to the upside, failed with a wick poking to the top, coming back down. Bulls attempt again to break to the upside, failed. And then we get a bear spinning top there, failed. And then we tried again for a third week in a row with much, with very little volume and failed. And therefore, because of all these failed attempts since November, we are now finally downtrending and that's very significant in my opinion. So now we take a look at the monthly chart to see how these guys are doing. And what we are seeing for the monthly charts is that we are getting a bounce above right the last month we ended up closing with a doji type of candle or a hammer whatever you want to call it it's not exactly a green candle it's a red one but nevertheless it is some sort of bullish candle interesting right and now for the month of course we had a very bullish december right it was pretty good and now for this month 12 days in we're getting kind of a neutral candle right now hopefully it'll end up becoming um much more confined over this period of the month where we're going to get some inside bar candles on lower time frames and we can get a breakout to either direction so the monthly is looking fairly bearish based on how the histogram is looking and based on how the macd is curving down as well so overall momentum in my opinion based on the monthly period is down it's very difficult to argue with this right now so we go to for example 12 hour candle here as well we're seeing the volume slowly fall off okay I gave you guys my very detailed count a few um, yesterday actually, but you know what? I, I do believe that we're gonna, this is usually what happens, okay guys? We get a relief rally. I'm gonna actually color code it accordingly, okay? We get a, this one here is the longer signal, okay? And that one will generally go something like that. So this longer signal right here on the MACD is the 26 moving average. But then if you look at the faster moving average, right? we'll end up getting some sort of crossover like that, come back down, right? And then we'll just finally cross over it again like that. So it can make like a double crossover kind of thing. And that's kind of what I look for. So in these ones, right, it kind of it kind of just goes like that and then comes back down. And then we get a lower histogram tick, right? Not nearly as low, sorry, is what I meant to say, as these previous regions. And then we finally break to the upside. So now if I'm looking at resistances, right, there's no... That there's no um, doubt in my mind that this region right here is a strong resistance area. It extends pretty far back in my opinion, okay? I'm gonna highlight for you guys why. There, for example, right? That becomes a fairly strong, actually I'm gonna move it up a little bit so you guys can see right around here, right? Around the 38 to 3900 regions, right? That ends up becoming a resistance zone, which is very heavy. This one as well, right? You know, these regions all over here becomes a cluster of resistances. Once was previously a support, or once it was a previously a support, and now it's a resistance, and that's just the general nature of markets and how they trend. What was a resistance is now a support, and what was a support is now a resistance, right? And if I take the FIB structure of this entire range as well, right? I mean, you know, like if this this whole region, in my opinion, is going to be a heavy resistance zone where people will end up adding more to their short. I think that as we ladder up here, people could even ladder up to, you know, if it does go to 4K, you know, it, it's possible 
but I, I think people are gonna really heavily load up on their short positions at the 38 to 80 ranges or anywhere between basically 38 and 3900. And then we're gonna make another correction wave down in my opinion. So even if we hit only the 786 Fib level, right? Where that goes down there, we'll just talk about it, right? We, we first of all might see some correlation like that 786, for example, right around the 3462 range, which I'll highlight. And then if this does do, for example, a dead cat bounce right here, then this dead cat bounce, okay? Oops, I'm choosing the wrong one. I'm just clicking on the wrong one. My apologies. The dead cat bounce, right? 786 level. Oh, what do we see? We see a double confluent zone. And the worst case scenario is we do a one to one to 3300. But I think where my big long entry is going to be about 3450 to 3500. And whenever there's a high probability play that I personally believe in, what I always want to do is add size. Because if it's a high probability play, well, it's not exactly scalping, right? Where you don't want to take too great of a chance for only a one or 2% gain on a scalp, right? Those are scalps. Swing positions are much different where you want to add size if it yields a high probability play with a very good risk to reward setup. With little risk, right? Why not add size? Because if you keep taking these plays over time, you're absolutely going to be profitable. So this stands my technical analysis for the day. We have been trending sideways for a very long time now. And this is all the information that I can provide based on what is available at the moment. And when more data comes in, I'll absolutely be able to um, discern and dissect more information. But as it stands, I do believe there is going to be a relief rally to about 38 to 3900 ranges before we finally finish the ABC coming down here. And don't forget that within the B structure, it could also make a bearish flag consolidation pattern, right? So A to B could also have A, B, C, D, E's as well in there. So anyways, thank you very much for your time. And just to let you guys know that for um, all of January, because people have expressed a lot of interest in my course, if you guys are absolutely still interested in it, uh, reach out to me. But just so you guys know, I'll be doing it for $300 in Bitcoin sent to this address. Just DM me a screenshot of your payment. And um, once I get it, I'll send you guys a voucher for both courses. So this means that it's 150 for each course. If you bought course one, I would still do the second one for 150 for you, or you can buy both of them together for 300. Um, and then I think for a lot of people that have taken the course, they say that it's um, it's a good course to take, okay? Not tuning my own horn or anything, but I've spent a lot of time compiling it in a very clear and concise manner that will make sense. And it's absolutely designed for the beginners, right? If you guys are new in the market, Definitely think of taking it. I'll explain a lot of the terminologies and all the bare necessities and especially the fundamentals for what you need to know to perhaps be a successful trader in the future. And on um, this experience, guys, like, um, you know, it might be a lot of money to some people. It might not be a lot of money to some people. But I think um, I was working only five, six days and I'm averaging a thousand dollars a day. And, uh, you know, I learned how to grow my account very slowly over a period of time. And it just teaches you how to have the mentality of a trader. So if you guys are interested in it, um, just contact me, um, reach out to me. If you guys, you know, are looking for that discount just for course two there. So it's 300 for both courses or 150 each. And I'll send you guys a voucher as soon as the payment is, is received. And once again, I'm in absolutely no position whatsoever. And I'll keep you guys updated. As always, once I find out more information about my position and once I get more data in the market that I, that can be extracted. So have yourselves a great day. Thank you very much for all the love and the support that you've always shown me. And I wish you guys a wonderful weekend. Bye now.